Hi there, my name is Jason Caldwell, and I'm the lead developer for the S2 member plugin for WordPress. In this video, this is going to be a multi part video. Uh, in the first part, we're going to cover uh, an overview of the S2 member PayPal options, which you see here. And in the second part, we're going to briefly uh, discuss how to integrate PayPal buttons once you have the PayPal options configured. How do you integrate PayPal buttons into the membership options page for S2 member? which we already created the membership options page in the introductory video. Okay, so starting with S2 members PayPal options, we can just click here one at a time and look at this field. Uh, look at this subsection here. You just click these little bars here to expand and collapse these subsections. Uh, the first thing we'll notice is that S2 member, the free version, which is what we have installed here, uh, only integrates with PayPal website payment standard. Uh, and you need to have a business account in order to use that service. Uh, so you'll need a PayPal business account. If you already have a PayPal personal account that you've used uh, to purchase things online in the past, then uh, you can upgrade your existing account to a business status, and that will work just fine. Or you can create a new one. Uh, or if you don't have one at all, you can create one. And in either case, a business account with PayPal is free. Uh, now, with the S2 Member Pro module, you will need a PayPal Pro account because S2 Member Pro uh, is much more powerful, and it integrates with uh, PayPal. PayPal's Pro service, which allows you to run uh, all of the forms on your own site, gives you a lot more control, and uh, your customers don't necessarily have to have a PayPal account in order to complete checkout. Uh, but uh, we'll do separate videos on S2 Member Pro. For right now, getting back to uh, Website Payments Pro integration, uh, the first thing you do is make sure you have a business account. Once you've verified that, you put in your primary email address that's associated with your PayPal account into this box. Uh, you fill that into this field here, and then you can skip down to this section here. And you can either choose to enable sandbox testing or not. Now, if I choose yes here, which I don't recommend that you do unless you're planning on testing, if I choose yes, then I have to go back and change this again. Because essentially, by choosing yes, you're saying, okay, well, I'm going to go to the Developer Center for PayPal, and I'm going to create a, a buyer test account and a business test account, and I'm going to test it out in sandbox mode. So in that case, you would need to take the test business account address and put that into the box here instead of your live account. Uh, and when you're setting this up uh, as a novice user, you just put in your live account and leave this check to no. Now, for everyone, I recommend enabling S2 members logging routines for PayPal. Uh, I recommend leaving these on for the first two to three months uh, that your site is up and running. You know, normally when you first install S2 member and you get your site up and running, the first month is usually, for most people, all about marketing. Uh, you're out there, uh, you're getting link partners, you're promoting the, the business, and you're, you're in your second and third month is when you're usually receiving funds. And it's in that second and third month when S2 members' processing routines are going to start seeing all the different scenarios uh, that are possible. And so having the logs turned on will allow you as the site owner, it'll give you a, a, better, a better level of confidence in the SMR plugin because looking at the logs, you can see exactly what S2 member is doing, how it's, how it's reacting to certain IPN events, how it's reacting to uh, the return page uh, functionality. For example, if a customer cancels their account, if a chargeback occurs or a refund occurs, uh, what kind of emails is, are S, is S2 member processing for you? Uh, all of that is available in the logs, and we've taken a, a lot of care to make sure that S2 member is very uh, uh, comprehensive in its log reporting so that when you go through the log, uh, S2 will detail exactly which actions it took and exactly why it took which action. Uh, so it'll, it really gives you some insight, and I recommend leaving that on at least for the first two or three months, if not even longer. Uh, it's always nice to go back in there and take a look, especially if you have a customer um, that is complaining for one reason or another, allows you to take a look. And, and there's also always the possibility of a bug existing in, in, a, in, a, in an existing or even in a future release, and, and we are more than open to receiving bug reports, and we constantly update the software to make sure that it's handling every situation uh, the way it should be. Okay, also, uh, enabling logging also makes it possible, if you have the Pro module installed, it will also enable API logging, which shows you the communication. Now, that's not to be worried about in the free version of S2 Member, but just to touch on that, API logging is only for S2 Member Pro, and then the free version with just the free version of S2 Member, you just worry about IP and a return page logging, and that's it. Uh, and these log files are stored. It show, it'll show you here, depending on your server installation, where the log files are stored at. You can log in uh, through FTP access at any time you like and, and download those files uh, and take a look at them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's collapse this panel and move on. We're 
going into IPN integration. Now, and this is really simple. All you do is you log into your PayPal account, you go to account profile, then you go to instant payment notification preferences, and you turn IPN notifications on. Uh, S2 member will provide you on your installation with the URL right here on this line where you can copy and just paste this in. So I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to switch over to another screen here that will show what you will see when you get to the IPN uh, uh, configuration panel inside your PayPal account. And what we'll do is we'll go down and we just click this button that says choose IPN settings. And then we'll have a place where we can paste in the notification URL that S2 member provided us with. And we will check to receive IPN notifications where it says enable and we click save. Okay, and that's it. Now IPN integration is complete. Okay, so let's go back over now and go to the next step. The next step is PDT auto return. PDT stands for payment data transfer. And this essentially is very similar to IPN, which is instant payment notifications. PDT, though, is, is designed more for the front end of your site in that it's, it allows S2 member to react immediately uh, to the customer immediately after they return from checkout at PayPal, whereas IPN, although it's considered more reliable and more powerful, is strictly behind the scene. So it's not by itself, it's not possible of responding in real time to a customer's return after checkout. So S2 member deals with these two services its approach is to integrate both of them. So when you integrate both of them, S2 member is capable of the reliable communication provided through IPN, which is more powerful and it's capable of uh, more in-depth reporting. And then the PDT is more customer friendly in that your customers will receive a response right away. And this is also very simple to integrate. All you do is you go to your account profile inside your PayPal account, and you go to website payment preferences. And you're gonna turn auto return feature on. Okay, again, Estimer provides you with the auto return URL. So just like the IPN integration, you're given a special URL by S2 member. So we're going to go back over to PayPal. I'm going to take you to the screen. This is what you'll see when you get to the website payment preferences section. And so right here, you just turn auto return on and you paste in your return URL that was provided to you by S2 member. Okay, then right down here, just below that, you will see the payment data transfer, which says optional. Okay, now, I, although this is optional, I highly recommend that you enable this with S2 member. So you set this to on, and you're going to copy this identity token, because S2 member needs this identity token. Now, this, if this is not visible to you in your PayPal account, it will be after you enable payment data transfer and click save. Okay, so once we copy the identity token, we're going to go back over to S2 member's configuration and paste that into the field provided by S2 member. Okay, and then we'll collapse this panel. Now IPN and PDT integration is complete and I have my account details in. Okay, so now we're gonna go take a look at the confirmation email. The confirmation email is sent in response to any checkout event for membership level access. So if a customer completes checkout at PayPal, they will be uh, sent an email which is titled sign up confirmation which is processed by the IPN routines for S2 member. This email can be disabled if you prefer. You just empty this field out and then nobody will get the email. Okay, by default, S2 member comes with this field already pre-filled and it'll have the full name of the customer which is dynamically inserted with this replacement code and then the payer's email. Uh, you can also, for example, I can copy this little, this little section right here and add it on to this so I can have a, an additional recipient. So, for example, I could change this to my own address, and that way I would get a copy of everything the customer is receiving. And also, the customer will not know that I'm getting a copy. Uh, S2 member handles this in a very private way so that one person is not, uh, does not know that the other one got the copy. Okay? Now, the, the subject line and message for this email are already set by default, and these are designed so that they'll work on anybody's site. Uh, they'll work in any scenario, but feel free to customize them further if you'd like. Uh, if you have certain things that you need to relate to your customer, certain information, uh, you can mo modify this if you like. Uh, the replacement codes are documented here, and these will work in the, both the message field and also in the, the subject field. These replacement codes are valid in either one. And, for example, you can insert the customer's first name dynamically by using a replacement code. So it would say, thanks, Jason, if you put in the first name. Uh, and this, this is the registration URL, which is very important. You want to make sure it's always in there because this is how the customer will gain access to the registration form after they've completed checkout so they can actually 
uh, set up their username, password, and log back and log into the site for the first time after they've uh, received uh, premium access to your website. Okay, so let's collapse this panel and move on down. We're going to skip this section because there's going to be another video done on, on this specific feature, which is called specific post page access. Uh, this, this was very similar to this email, only this is dedicated for this specific uh, feature, which is an added layer of functionality for S2 member. Uh, so check their website at s2member.com for a video covering this topic. <clears throat> okay, PayPal EOT behavior. EOT stands for end of term. Uh, an end of term occurs anytime a cancellation results in S2 member uh, denying the customer access because they expired, because they canceled, or because they uh, forced you to uh, force you to issue them a refund, or they forced a charge back to you through through PayPal. Uh, whenever an EOT occurs, S2 member will take one of two actions. It'll either demote the current paid subscriber to level zero, which is be a free subscriber. So they would continue to have a login on your site, but they would lose their print, their paid access level. Instead, they'd be demoted. Uh, just incidentally, this is also how you would uh, temporarily uh, demote a user. Uh, if you were going to do it manually, you could just go up here to users and find them in the list and change their role over to free subscriber uh, for temporarily if, if you want to review their transaction for any reason. Okay, alternatively, you can tell a customer to delete or erase their account completely. So whenever an EOT occurs, and this occurs through the WP Cron service, which is already built into WordPress. You don't need anything else special to run WP Cron. Uh, you just leave this set to yes, and an S2 member will handle everything else on its own. Uh, and then you, and this will force a deletion. So rather than demoting them, it'll just erase their account. Now, if you're a developer and you would rather run the EOT system on your own Cron job, you can choose this option. And again, this is mostly for developers. But if you choose this, it'll enable these additional instructions and it'll provide you with the URL so that you can set up a server-side cron job uh, instead of relying on WP cron. So it's just a personal preference and normally this is something that a, a, an advanced user or a developer would implement. Uh, the, default ver the default variation here of WP cron works just fine uh, on, on almost any installation of WordPress. Okay, then you click save and that will save all of the options that we configured all at once. Okay, and the next part of this video, we're gonna cover the PayPal buttons which are listed right here, and you just click this subsection. Okay, so we're going to, in the second part of this video, we're going to take a look at uh, how to integrate PayPal buttons that are generated for you by S2 member into the membership options page for S2 member. Uh, the membership options page we covered in the introductory video, and it's just a page that lives in WordPress like any other page, and it's been configured as your, as your membership options page through the general options for S2 member. So now we've already configured that page and now it's time to put the PayPal button into that page so that uh, customers when they are redirected to that page will have a way to sign up and gain access to the paid features on your site. Okay so on this installation on, on this demonstration site for the videos uh, we're utilizing two of S2 members levels. We're utilizing level number zero and level number one. Level number zero, we have deemed free, which is reserved as a free level with S2 member. Level zero is not included here in this list because level zero is always free. So there's no reason to send a customer through PayPal because there's nothing to pay for. The way we allow a customer to sign up for free is by setting open registration to yes inside S2 